Larry? All right, thanks very much, Andrew Mitchell. We appreciate the update. You bet. So, what does no options taken off the table actually mean? Is it military action, sanctions, or what? My next guest calls the plot an act of war. Joining us now is the chairman of the House Homeland Security Committee, Peter King, Republican from New York. Mr. King, welcome back to the show. Do you regard this crazy Iranian plot to kill the Saudi ambassador, do you regard it as an act of war? Larry, we have to. Uh, first of all, if the uh, plot had been carried out, we could have had hundreds of Americans killed. We would have had embassies uh, attacked on American soil. We would have had a foreign diplomat killed on American soil. This is, uh, you know, there's always acts of terror. There's always, uh, you know, certainly with the Iranians, they've been active in Iraq and uh, actions similar to that. But to actually uh, be considering an attack on the American mainland of this magnitude, they really not just crossed the red line, they jumped over the red line and this to me is an act of war and I'm not saying that the president should be sending in the military but certainly that should be kept out there as an option because against Iran coming from uh, Eric Holder at the Department of Justice and Hillary Clinton at the State Department are running into increased skepticism here in the United States I was interested to see that on the night this uh, these charges were launched the NBC nightly news was skeptical Michael Isikoff on MSNBC was skeptical. One leading blog writes uh, concerning these charges, fake, fake, fake. It is a very far-fetched story about a guy called Arbabsiar who was entrapped uh, by an agent of the Drug Enforcement Administration in Mexico and accused of paying $100,000 for a plot to assassinate the Saudi Arabian ambassador here to Washington, D.C. The 100000 was supposedly a down payment on $1.5 million. Uh, the problem with this story is how improbable it is. Um, this is not the way that such an action would actually be uh, organized because it is impossible to maintain security in the penetrated agent infested world of the Mexican drug cartels. No serious intelligence agency would ever take this approach. So that makes no sense. My obvious uh, attempt here, and it's a crude one and it's a transparent one, is to, to stoke up another crisis with Iran. Now, maybe we could ask ourselves why the United States would be doing that at this time. The entire Anglo-American ruling elite has gone, I think, collectively uh, bonkers over a number of issues. First of all, the Arab Spring has now turned into the Arab Autumn. The destabilization and toppling of governments has now come pretty much to a halt. Gaddafi is fighting back. The attack on Syria is not working. On the other hand, there may be something going on with the dollar that is not immediately evident. The dollar, one of the Anglo-American tactics is to try to provoke a war in the Gulf, in the Persian Gulf, the Iranian Gulf area. And uh, that, of course, means uh, that the oil shipments would be cut. If you could raise the price of oil by two or three or four hundred percent, that would be the best support operation for the dollar, and that may be what they're, what they're trying to do with a crude stunt like the Arbapsion uh, indictment. There's a lot of speculation with respect to uh, whether there's a degree of reality to uh, to this uh, story about uh, um, this Iranian American and the uh, Mexican drug cartel and the alleged plot to assassinate the Saudi ambassador in Washington. If that sounds strange, uh, that is because it, it is strange. Uh, you know, Hillary Clinton, the uh, Secretary of State, uh, said yesterday that you couldn't make this stuff up. <laughs> well, yes, you can. Sure, you can. Uh, actually, uh, David Petraeus, the new head of the CIA, was instrumental in making this stuff up. David Ignatius, one of the columnists of the Washington Post, uh, gave the game away today. In his column, he, he talks about uh, uh, one big reason that after being uh, not convinced at all by the fragmentary and elusive nature of the evidence, one big reason uh, that top officials became convinced that the plan was real, says Ignatius, quote, is that the CIA gathered information corroborating the informant's juicy allegations and showing 
that the plot had support from top covert action arm of the Iranian government. Ignatius adds, it was this intelligence collected in Iran, not tips from somebody in the Mexican drug mafia, that swung the balance and persuaded top officials. Now, <laughs> okay, so what does that mean? Well, that means that David Petraeus, the new head of the CIA, is cooperating. Is cooperating fully in this attempt to blacken Iran. Uh, the anti-Iran hysteria uh, on the part of the neocons in Washington has, re has reached uh, new proportions. This is deadly serious, because if you have the, the head of the CIA professing to believe that Iran was behind some kind of a plot like this, despite all the evidence that this is a cockamamie story. I mean, I had a uh, previous operations officer uh, tell me yesterday, ask yourself, Ray, he says, ask yourself, if you were an Iranian undercover operative under instructions to hire a killer to assassinate the Saudi Arabian ambassador, why in the heck would you consider it necessary to explain to explain to a presumed Mexican drug dealer that this murder was planned and would be paid for by Iran? The bottom line here is to ask yourself, what other government in the Middle East would benefit most from a serious deterioration of Washington's relations with Tehran? Israel is beating the drums for an attack on Iran. This is yet another indication that the neoconservatives subservient to Israeli interests are helping that process in Washington. And sadly, that now includes the head of the CIA. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Friday, October 14th, 2011, and I'm Darko. This is part two. This is my website, ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. Also, ddarko2012 is my YouTube channel. Uh, there's a poll here, and also you can follow GGN by putting in your email address. I'm going to keep moving because I have a lot of articles to get to. Um, all right, Petraeus says CIA fuels Iran murder plot. We kind of covered that, but there's more information on it if you would like to check it out. Uh, most, if not all, the links will be posted in the YouTube's video description. U.S. eyes more sanctions on Iran central bank. And this is just the same old crap that's been going on since I did my little undergraduate uh, research um, uh, project in college on Iran about how Israel was trying to attack Iran. That was in right before I graduated, and that was in 2008 in the spring. So here we are almost four years later. And um, it's, it's the same rhetoric. It's, I went through so many articles, like, you know, documenting the case for war against Iran backed by Israel, and of course, using uh, U.S. as kind of a proxy or whatever. And uh, so, I mean, it is, that's what it is, that those are the key players, the culprits. And then, of course, they use these little agencies um, uh, to, to do what they want. And it says here, IAEA expected to increase pressure on Iran. The UN nuclear watchdog is expected to add to growing international pressure on Iran with a report next month likely to heighten suspicions about the Islamic State's atomic ambitions, which is stupid because they've actually, um, Iran's allowed them to come in and um, basically inspect them. And every time they pass their inspections, and there's nothing that they can do about it. From golfnews.com, will uh, Israel bomb Iran without notifying the U.S.? Danger of Natiano may seek to break out the current political isolation by mounting a spectacular attack. And remember, just a um, lesson, what was it, the last uh, video that I covered on Wednesday? I covered an article where it said, what, um, that Israel was actually uh, doing a mock draft call up for the military. And I believe the. Uh, that Israel actually has a national compulsory service um, as well. So very uh, militaristic. It says here, FBI account of terror plot suggests uh, sting. And it says here, while the Obama regime vows to hold the Iranian government, quote, accountable for the alleged plot to assassinate the Saudi ambassador in Washington, a legal document describing uh, evidence in the case provides multiple indications that it was mainly the result of a Federal Bureau of Investigation sting operation, kind of like what, the Christmas Day bomber, where they came out and said uh, shortly after that he was actually working for the FBI and was part of a sting operation, just like what, oh, the Christmas tree bomber in Oregon, too. Yeah, that was a sting as well. They're all stings, and they get uh, people uh, and throw them away, uh, basically put them in jail on uh, terrorist charges and throw away the key, and, um, you know, that's a new justice system. 
And the crazy thing is that you don't even have to do anything. All you have to do is plot it. I mean, you heard uh, Re Representative King there saying that in that video. It's not It's not so much that they even uh, did anything. It's just that there's a threat of doing something. And, and in his eyes, it's what? It's grounds for declaring war on a country when they didn't even do anything. Um, so it says here, the nonsensical alleged Iranian plot and the end of all reason. So go in there and check that out. I'm just kind of uh, skimming through these and because the links are going to be posted. And you can go in there and check that out. But I have more news I want to get to. So, And you saw a lot in the beginning of the video with Tarpley and that. It says here, uh, Washington fake terror charge against Iran is out of Bollywood, not Hollywood. And you keep hearing about that, uh, like words like this. Washington's bombing plot is out of character for Iran's professional killers. This is from Time, too. So it just goes to show you this whole thing was a charade. Um, you know, just like uh, bin Laden killing and then uh, on al, al I can never pronounce his name, but the recent American uh, Yemen that was uh, killed, Yemeni that was killed. And um, so, and that's crazy because remember, going back to King, what he said, he, what did he say? He said, oh, you know, this is where we got to draw the line, uh, you know, when they're trying to uh, come in here and, and, and kill American citizens. It's like, well, wait a minute. Uh, you just killed and assassinated an American citizen for the first time in the name of war on terror. So I think there should be a line drawn there as well there, man. Then we have some experts question Iran's role in the bungled plot. Get that out of the way. The U.S. Uh, says terrorists seeking missing Libyan missiles. So terrorist groups have expressed interest in obtaining some of the thousands of shoulder-launched missiles that have gone missing in Libya. And I wonder who has those. 20,000 uh, heat-seeking missiles disappear from Libyan. So I wonder who those terrorists are. Oh, they're the rebels, the revolutionaries, the good guys, right? They're the ones... They actually have them. Gaddafi loyalists and, and uh, Libya, NTC, Tripoli, battle ends. That's right, gun battle in Libya, uh, Libyan's capital, Tripoli, between forces loyal to the, the NTC, uh, terrorists, and Gaddafi's uh, loyalists. And it said that the fight started after demonstration by Gaddafi loyalists. So that's right. Uh, like I said, they do like Gaddafi still, well, most of them out there. And then they, they're eventually they're going to come out on the streets and protest. That's what uh, started it off. Capture of Gaddafi's son lifts Tripoli's spirits. So his son was uh, captured trying to flee the embattled city of Sirte. Although I don't know if I believe that, whether it's propaganda or not, because they said that before. And he showed up that night in a, in a van driving around in Tripoli. Uh, U.S. tells Assad to step down now. Some more regime change for that oil. Get that dollar boosted up. Activist Syrian forces kill seven deaths top 3,000. U.N. plea as Syria deaths past 3,000. They must take immediate measures. The global government must take action for humanitarian rights. Gunmen killed 10 in Syria ambush, so media reports Syria says 10 government forces have been killed in an ambush in northwestern Syria. I'm going to try this Idlib, but activists say those killer are, those killed are protesters. Then we have Israel to build 1,000 more settlements in East El Quds. Next up, we have Israel settlers attack girls' school in West Bank. It says they have attacked girls' school in West Bank as Israel steps up violence against Palestinians in the occupied territories. Uh, computer virus found at U.S. drone base, not a nuisance and not an operational th uh, threat, says U.S. Air Force. Of course, they're referring to this U.S. drone shot down over Somalia, and then uh, U.S. drone strike kills 78 in Somalia, so they obviously are not uh, 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 hindering operational um, productivity, so they're still killing people, even though their drones are getting shot down. Somali troops uh, kill 55 Al Shabaab fighters. Man, these numbers are just uh, heinous. Mohammed Yunus brings social business to Haiti, Nobel Prize winner, talking about social business in Haiti as he tries to rebuild after a year's earthquake. Says Haiti leader determined to revive disbanded army, even if he doesn't have the support of others. Remember, I told you about him. This is the new president. Then Haiti government links to old regime prompt security, talking about baby doc. U.S. drone strike kills four in Pakistan, and a Chinese fighter jet nosedives into a field at a show. Oh, so the Chinese have their own little ritual blood sacrifices as well, and it went nose down, just like the last one in Reno. PLA Air Force denies rumors of experimental jet craft. Cheap mercenaries recruits lured into NATO for 500 rubles per day and the iPod. Says here, grandmother sues over flashbang grenade raid. That's right, and suffered a heart attack. 
Oops, we fabricated drug charges against innocent people to meet arrest quotas. Former detective trust, uh, testifies Mexico detains two soldiers for alleged kidnapping. That's right, that's who's doing it. Just like the government's also running the uh, drug cartel. Hundreds of civilians in the UK get powers to find people and demand personal details. Homosexual military personal personnel holding their first convention in Sin City. Father quizzed by police for taking the innocent photo of his own daughter in a shopping center. And children banned from blowing balloons. This is GGN and I'm Darko. Thank you.